Good morning and good evening. Today I want to talk about a topic which has literally taken the entire IT industry by storm. This is about Block 4 Shell, um, a topic which everybody is talking about. It's grabbing media headlines like the one on the screen. There are memes becoming very popular and people are all talking about suddenly Block 4J, Secure, Java Coding Practices, JMDI, what it is and things like that. There's a tons of great materials already online in the form of videos and blogs and, and uh, exploit. So my goal through this video clearly is to demonstrate uh, an attack and how um, a system can be vulnerable to, to such exploitation. So some of the logics of this video is inspired by one specific uh, tab repository that I'm going to leave the link behind. I want to call out a disclaimer. This video is only for educational purposes, specifically to demonstrate how a bad actor can potentially exploit the CV 2021-4428. Uh, in a Java application that uses Log4j2 library. This does not offer a remediation process whatsoever. Please consult your organization or vendor's official recommendation for identifying, assessing the impact, and remediating the vulnerability, if any. So, similar on a single personal Mac machine, which is not on the network, but to make it a little bit more closer to uh, the real life scenario, you could run it on a containerized environment that will give you two different machines or IP addresses. One is a business user uh, who runs a web application, which is a popular uh, public website. Another one is a bad actor who has access to that public website. So the injection or the simulation starts when uh, the bad actor uh, does a JNDI lookup uh, as an input parameter to a UI screen. That takes the control to his LDAP server, uh, which is in his control. The LDAP server then makes use of a web server as a helper to uh, find out a pre-compiled class file or a malicious code, then injects it uh, back as a response to the to the JDI lookup uh, into the Apache Tomcat server. The Apache Tomcat server then executes this malicious code locally, and then uh, through that, um, uh, the bad actor gets uh, a handle to the uh, to the shell with which he can you know, open any application. Welcome back to the Log4 Shell exploitation demo. The application that we have today is called Spring Music. It's a very popular Spring Boot application used to be deployed in environments like Cloud Foundry. So it's a simple application. You've got different albums uh, arranged by different tiles. You can uh, sort them based on title, artist, tier, and genre. You also have a feature where you can uh, list them, I guess, like this, and um, also you know bring the tiles back. Uh, the important thing we will look here is an addition to an album. This is a place from where we can input some field elements. So let's see how we can exploit. By default, um, Spring Music application does not use uh, Log4j uh, APIs. It instead uses um, SLF4J. Now I have explicitly removed them and added um, a version of uh, Log4J which is uh, currently vulnerable and um, that's it and, and along with that uh, I have also made some changes to the controller class which is the one uh, which will get invoked when you um, when you actually try to add a new album. So as you notice here I have replaced them with Log4J. Um, line of code that we want to investigate is this section. Um, element that we want to kind of play around a little bit to, to see how to you know do a JNDA lookup and, and eventually you know get uh, exploited. Start with the happy bar journey. We'll add an album with uh, you know, all correct inputs. So let's say uh, album is blinding lights. Um, weekend. And the year of release is 2020 and genre is pop. So I'll go ahead and save it and I'll see that uh, it's already sorted by the year I guess. So it's already appearing, so everything is working fine. Now let's try to now manipulate this user input by providing a malicious input. Now it is ideally not expected to be given in this field. And since there is no field validation applied here, you can see that there is a tick mark here. Now uh, the artist again is weekend and the release is 2020. So the moment you hit this, notice here there is a Firefox opened and that's what does it say that you are hacked. Well, let, let's try to understand what really happened. At the time when you uh, saved the album, this line of code got executed where instead of getting a real title, you actually got a JNDI lookup. Now the address of the JNDI lookup was something like this. That means that local host 3001, there must be some sort of an LDAP server that is running. So let's see what really is running there, the JNDI call. Let's look at the code, it will become more easy. Uh, so the LDAP server is here. Um, what it is doing is, first of all, it is running a, on 3001 and anytime a JDA lookup or an LDAP call is happening, uh, there is the message that it is crafting and it is sending that message to um, 
a local web server which is listening at 3002 port. The web server is simply opening up a, a, a file which is the pre-compiled malicious code and I'll show you the code and then uh, creating it as a, as a stream and then you know uh, passing it back to the uh, to the to the uh, caller which is uh, the Tomcat server. Uh, so what is a malicious code really? Let's look at that as well and the malicious code uh, is here and at this point it is actually opening up a shell and um, using this command it will launch a Firefox now this is uh, because it is deployed in a Mac uh, machine and then open up that particular browser and that's what you saw here uh, when uh, this website got launched so in nutshell what really happened is that the log4j because of the log4j vulnerability the JNDI lookup on an LDAP server was possible and Although in this example that I showed you, this was, uh, you know, you had to do a little bit of, uh, um, you know, I think hack here to, to kind of first go to the LDAP server and then, you know, go back to the web server and then, you know, get to the, but my um, assumption is that if, if I have an LDAP server like this and I have a key, uh, if you can, uh, you know, inject a pre-compiled class directly into the LDAP, then by just simply doing a lookup itself I think uh, the vulnerability should get exploited. In short you are able to do a remote code execution uh, right from sitting in your machine which is very very dangerous and um, yeah that that's pretty much it. Um, thank you.